Alrighty then, we are now at the Burr King station, which is a fancy belt sander. I covered it at some length in an earlier uh, video, so I won't go into it here, other than to say the benefit of this kind of sander, as opposed to a vertical belt sander, is that you're able to get your eye exactly directly above the work so that you aren't guessing as to angles and depth and all that kind of stuff that you have a light background of this metal here and whatever it is that you're grinding on you're able to keep it in complete view while working so that's critical to what we're going to do here which is to take our trusty rusty uh, battery powered electric drill with a what's known as an aircraft bit which is just really long drill bit but only has a short amount of uh, fluting the rest is uh, smooth and that's for rigidity because the less metal there is the more bendy it is so this is to have a uh, uh, as, as rigid in stiffness terms as you can make a drill bit for that diameter and here is the uh, blank that we were working on. I've done two things to it. One is to cut it off to the length that I wanted. That's not rocket science. And the other was to take the uh, 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 airway, which came molded at 0 .120 inches, and I've enlarged it down about, not quite halfway, to 128 inches. And that is the exact same diameter as this drill bit. So that when this gets threaded on, you push it on and then start to turn it. And when it bottoms out, where the step down occurs in the hole, it's locked in place. So we are going to buzz this up against the 40 grit sanding belt by eye. Now I'll show you how to check that so that you can do a closer job than you think. Now this isn't as hard as it sounds. It does take a little practice, but it's not a, a, a freak talent that I happen to have or anything like that. As long as you're able to look straight down and have a good eye for these things, our natural eye, and understand what you're trying to accomplish, anybody with reasonable shop skills can grind a perfectly flat cone on a rod of any diameter using this method. And it's infinitely faster and less hassle than messing around trying to chuck something up exotically in a, 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 a lathe. And then uh, also easier than starting out from rod stock on a lathe, which then you wouldn't have any problem cutting the cone, but you got all the rest of the work to do. So. This is the shortest distance between the two points, and uh, here we go. Now this is going to be noisy, and because of the nature of the beast, uh, I'm going to uh, probably shut the camera off or at least pause it halfway in between because it's just it's repetitive. You just see me do the same thing over and over, but I want you to watch the technique as far as keeping things aligned a certain way, at least till you get the idea what's going on. And then I'll fire the camera back up when we're uh, uh, near finished. And I'll also then finish it on a finer belt. This is a 40 grit. And let me get a leather glove here. Forgot to bring it over to the camera. Okay. We are ready to go. Prepare for noise.
Okay, here is the uh, result after, uh, this is uh, 120 grit, which is about as fine as you need to go for this kind of procedure. I took it down with uh, 40 to within a millimeter maybe, and then uh, finished up with the 120. You can even tell by the sound that we've got a good fit. There's no uh, play side to side, which you'd get if it had too much uh, cone or not enough taper. You'll get the same result. One will just be wagging from the bottom and the other from the top. But if it, you get the squeak like that and you look at the, uh, the surface where it's been sanded, you'll see that the very, very top of the uh, the rough stuff here has picked up a little slickness from being um, stuck in there. So I'm sure you know what I mean by that. I can't think quite the right words for it, but in any event, now the sides of this, we're going to continue this line that we've created out to the end. This has a little bit of a curve to it that I think should look better if it's perfectly straight. And there's nothing much to that shape of the button and stuff. We do have to do some uh, fancy stuff with the uh, airway, and then we're done. So you can see that there's there's none of, there's no leveling of the shank to the stem and matching all that up. That if you have this kind of a setup to make uh, military stems, it's the best of all worlds. It's it doesn't take long at all. I don't even check anymore. Now there's ways you can take ring gauges and uh, determine the taper. But I started out just matching them by eye and now I can just make them by eye without having to check. I just get there and we're done. So in any event, that's it. I'm going to move the camera over to the drill press, show you some fancy airway stuff, and then we'll finish this up and move on to the next project.